Hey Wood Turners, I'm Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to my shop. Well, actually, we're under the canopy out in the front of the shop because of what I want to do, where I want to do it at today. I want to turn a basic bolt. I recently did a survey of club members for the Bayou Wood Turners. And in that survey, one of the questions was, what would you like to have? And they listed all these things. And one was the basic bowl. And I hear this from you guys a lot in emails about I'm getting ready, I'm starting, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. What are the basics? Well, I want to turn something today. I'm going to turn a shallow bowl because size and depth's got nothing to do with the preparation and getting getting the parts and pieces together. And I'm going to use the parts and pieces that came with the mini jet you bought, which are the faceplate and the live center, and if I need it, the, the drive center. But only those parts. And for tools, I'm going to use my Taste of Carbide set. That's right, steel handle, pipe, steel bar, pipe, handle, plastic overlay, square, round, and R2 cutters. That's what I'm going to use to cut this piece out today. We're going to get all the way down to the finishes, just like that. Now, if you're ready, you know what you got to do. It's hard to hear out here, so what you have to do really is watch. Once again, I'll explain the setup. This is a mini jet lake, this variable speed. Mine sleeps outside because I don't have any room in the shop. I have a plastic case that fits over it to keep it out of the weather. But it's still, this lake is 14 years old, and it has seen better times. I'm going to start with a piece on a faceplate. Now, this is going to be my glue block, but I have to have it ready before I do my other piece. So the first thing I do is one of the last things I need, which is a glue block. I've got four screws in it. These are not drywall screws. You know the rule about that. No drywall screws. These are soft metal screws. Well, any drywall screws are hard, aren't they? They're hard. They will break. I don't want these to break. I want them to bend and get out of my way bend and be hard to get out rather than break and drop the piece off. Get the tailstock out the way. Bring up my tool rest. Once I have everything set up, I want to have my tool rest set lower than most guys would because I want that cutter to run just about center. See that? That's the center of the piece. Now, this is square. I didn't even knock off the corners using a uh, a uh, bandsaw because maybe you don't have a bandsaw. As I step into this project, I want you to take note of a few things. The glue area is smaller. I don't want the full surface for a glue area. I used about an inch and three quarter screws, so I'm about five eighths of an inch away from here to the base depth of the screws. That way I can get about two uses, maybe three uses, out of this glue block. Glue blocks are a good way to save material. This is a 964 bit. I need to put a hole right in the middle here and go all the way through the glue block. This will be used for re registration later. So, shop made tool. Turn the handle, insert a 3 8 24 thread bolt that'll go into the bottom of your keyless chuck. Keyless chuck makes a great drill holder. Got it? That glue block is ready. A key item when we use this glue block again next time, we need a registration. We need to know that this one, right here, will align with this one. The screw hole is close enough. You don't have to line the pencil marks up. You need to know that that screw hole will be right here. It's time to put the face plate on the block. Now again, I'm doing this on a square block because some of you guys don't have a bandsaw, but you got wood. So this is how you go about it. I inscribe the circle on that block, same size as my face plate. The 
these are soft metal screws you see hardware store stuff I'm not gonna keep beating the drum about drywalls guys but I hear about injuries all the time from screws breaking and wood coming off and every time when I ask a few questions I find out a hardened screw is used those screws won't bend they will just break and I don't think Carnac the Magnificent can tell you when it will break you have your block on there now we're going to go to the lathe guess what I didn't think about earlier that's right this is about as big as it can be unless I take the corners off with something I can't swing it on this lathe so now we take a saw knock the corners off to something that will swing over here on this 10 inch lathe now just by using straight cuts not a band saw, this could have been done with a a skill saw out on a bench outside the shop just doing straight cuts I've got the corners knocked off to where this thing will spin now just that will make this thing a lot easier to turn just that one little move so again we set our tool rest the elevation won't change much now guess what this is this is not the top of the bowl don't slip up and immediately start dishing this thing out I've read about that someplace I never did it myself this is the bottom of the bowl. So we're going to clean this up and start sweeping it around and establish a front lid. The bottom of the bowl. You ready? Let's go with this thing. using a square cutter because you cut off the corner with it. I'm cutting about one eighth inch line all the way across it right now. Just too deep we step out and get in. We can go straight in. Let's set that outside edge so we can turn the speed up. go a little bit more to take out a, a couple of flat spots but essentially this is going to be the width of our bowl we've already set the diameter bottom would be right here which is a little bit less than three inches so we're going to set that bottom just with a pencil mark and continue on the inside line is going to be our foot or very close to it so I'm going to start sweeping this in. Still using that half inch cutter, the half inch square cutter, a 14 millimeter square cutter. I'll bring the speed up to make it cut a little bit more efficiently. These cutters cut so well that you can actually overload them very easily on a small lathe. And keep in mind, if you stall out that capacitor enough times, you will burn it up. A 
I've knocked the corners down and rounded it off a little bit. About time to swap over to another cutter. That's the R2 cutter. Slightly rounded face and rounded on the corners. That way I can make some passes back and forth. Right now I'm going to fix the glue block area. That has to be flat. And ready to receive the glued on block. Now I'm going to come back and straighten this up later, but it'd be really good if right now I went ahead and did some idea work for the bottom. An important thing to note right now is before I go too far, I need to locate that center to be an exact center. I need to have a point there so I can reference the glue block when I put the glue block on. Don't get ahead of me now because you know where I'm going with this, right? Okay. And my glue block looks to be a pretty good fit on there. You need to do a little dry test and see if it'll be flat on that to, to hold it in place. Now let's talk about some shape. We could do a plain bowl with just a crescent edge or we can bring this edge up and let it fan out a little bit. Why don't we get a little challenging and try something first. I'm going to clean up the marks on the far side of this at high speed. We're going to roll the tool over on the angle a little bit. See the cuts it takes when you do that? Now we're going to try to get a little creative edge on it. It's got to come over the top. So we'll take this off the top. That'd be where the lid, the lid comes over. I'm going to round it a little bit. Beauty of these tools, they cut on three sides about the same. Then we're going to come over here, do a little plow on this side. And then walk it around. Then we're going to take this one, walk this up to meet it. Liberty Light cut. One more whip at it and we got it straightened out, got rid of bark inclusion. Be sure you take the pencil and you feel for flat spots. Feel around the outside and make sure there are no flat spots. Flat spots catch the eye and they detect, detract from the look. Now we've got the bottom pretty much shaped up and ready to go. Now you can sand this out a little bit. Don't sand this. But you can sand this if you'd like to. But it's always reachable. So why don't you just wait a little while. Now we're going to put the glue block on. There's a special tool that's in my fall catalog that you need to do this with. Pay very, very close attention. To start with, we're going to use medium thick super glue to put this on. You can also use Wildwood Bond too. You've got to wait about an hour or two more. And you can also use other glues, but if you use a hot glue, all bets are off. If you use a soft glue, all bets are off. If you use a cheap glue, all bets are off. You didn't know we were betting, did you? My glue block, base of my blue glue block, that's my high-tech dust removal system. I'm going to take and put a bead of glue around that block and with this very precise center alignment tool and give it to you for 20 bucks. But give me notice because I gotta go get some coat hangers the center alignment tool, I put that block in place, then I bring up my tailstock, and I put a little bit of pressure on it. And I allow it to cure. 
If you like to get one of these, I'll make you a heck of a deal. I'll give you three for thirty dollars, and they'll be straight, not bent. You can't pass that up. Well, you can, but it ain't good for me if you do. You may be asking yourself, what's he doing? Well, that glue's got to cure a little while. I don't want to rush it. And I'm getting tired. It's getting late in the day, so I want to put on my portable lathe sleeps outside cover device, also on the fall catalog. And I'm going to snap this down, and I'm going to leave it sit for the evening. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to turn it, take it off, swap out that face plate, and start turning the inside. And remember, we're doing all this with what comes with your mini jet and my taste of, car, taste of carbide kit. That's all you need. Well, you really do need the wood. But you knew that, right? As the screen said, it's another day. Take the lid off. Nice how it's an indestructible cover. And today, I need to flip this around, take the face plate off where it's at, and put it over here on the glue block. And that's a pretty simple procedure, and that's going to allow me to go ahead and spin out the top of the bowl, the face of the bowl. And the beauty of all this is this open end bowl turning, simple stuff, can normally be done without a tail stock. So, we get that out the way. Keep in mind we did mark this to line up with this hole so when we put it back together we don't have to re-register this face plate to the wood. It's not a big thing but it helps you keep from blowing parts up, adding holes to the face to uh, glue blocks, etc. And I like to save the glue blocks later if they don't have any cracks or splits. That's why I don't use trash lumber for doing that. Yeah. Face plate is on this side and I'm going to go on a headstock and just see just how lucky we were with that. And we're all right. We're not great. Yeah, there is a little bit of a wobble. But we can fix that because I can still get to the back side. So that would be our first move. I'm going to stick with the Zar 2 cutter. Start making some light cuts. The next step would be to start hollowing out the face of the bowl. I fixed that back so I took a couple of passes. When I start hollowing out or dishing out a bowl, the first thing I do is set a center and work to the center. And I use this. This is a 3 8 inch, 14 inch long drill bit I bought at the hardware store and a wood handle made in the shop. And I have a little rubber grommet picked up at the hardware store just as a depth gauge. And what I do is find the center and I push in to set this depth, but I'm going to get in your way, so let me move you. Drop the tool rest out of your way, and don't push on, on past the bushing. That's the bushing. That's about how deep I'm going to be. I'm going to be deeper. But this gives me a good working point to get started. It really does help. I'm going to go right back into my R2 cutter for a little while 
Now I could swap and go back to the square because it's very aggressive and take some meat out the middle of this thing. But all I'm looking to do right now is get rid of some of this lumber. No big, big bites now. Consider turning a bowl like eating an elephant. You're only going to take little bites. And the more wood I get rid of, the more balanced it'll become. I started to tell you that if you stall it out too many times like that, you're going to burn up the compressor, the capacitor. You're going to burn up the capacitor. A capacitor for this motor is available locally at an air conditioning supply company. Take the capacitor off the motor, take it to the air conditioning company, and make sure they match it for all the spec and the size so it goes back into the cover and you will save yourself $30 of headache and freight. You can get into simple pull cuts. Get into that middle, get about an eighth of an inch on your cutter. You just slide it back. With a simple screwdriver, I moved over to an 18 millimeter round just because I'm going to start shaping the bottom and it's easier. Now, I keep getting asked what happens when the cutters move on the end of the bar, like the square and the R2 and all. Put a drop of CA glue under it. When you need to change it, just warm it up with a cigarette lighter. After roughing in for a little while, I've gotten to the knob and down to the part in the center. And I want to take a look. This is going to be a utilitary bolt. And I've got an even half an inch until I get up here and I'm down about three eighths. So I want to take another eighth of an inch or so off the inside of this to make it uniform. But so far I've set the edge and the outside. And I'm going to improve some of these and detail them out. But just gives me an idea about where we're going and how we're going to get there. And also change the speed on the lathe from now spinning up at about 1600 RPMs. That's where I'm 3 eighths, right there. I gotta make sure I get rid of that dimple in the center. It'll catch light. So I need to walk up to it and back and forth from it. But dilly dally on it, it'll get deeper. And dilly dally is a technical term in wood turning.
make a few passes, check the measurements. It was pretty close. I'm within about a sixteenth of an inch of being there. I want to roll the tool over on its shoulder to make lighter scrapes or slices. Remember, I have to keep the tool rest clean and flat or I'll read that. A bump here is a bump there. Same thing with going to that center. If you can detect it at all, you have to work on it. We've got a pretty good shape going here. We fixed this outside edge. Uh, back side's ready. All we need to do is sand this piece out. Now, this will be a nice piece. Now, one of the keys to sanding it out is going to be use a, uh, a self-powered sander with uh, maybe an 80 grit to start with. And we'll knock out the remaining tool marks. And then we're going to wet it and go from there with wet paper. Uh, why wet it? This is old dry mahogany. Um, it could handle being wet and will cut nicer and less dust. What you're not seeing here is behind me blowing straight across like this is a fan today. Number one, it's in the 90s out here. Number two, it helps keep the dust away from me and uh, it's called the dust avoidance system, not a dust collection system. It's very helpful when you're turning dusty woods or uh, woods that you, you really just don't like. So we've got this out the way, um, the turning out the way. Let's get to sanding this thing. Don't forget now, when you're going through the papers, go to the back side. And do that the same way, same grit, and don't skip grit. Skipping grits. You want to go one and one half times that. That's 120. So you want to go to 180 next. One and a half times that. That's a good step. You don't need to go to 150 and all that. Now after 180, we're going to want to stop the machine and look for deep scratches or tears that we may have to work on. I don't know if you can see them on the camera, but right here, I've got some deep scratches from the one from the 80 that I need to get rid of before I leave the 180. So I need to back up the 120 and get this out of there, then come back to 180 again. There's no way I'm going to get that scratch out by the time I get the 400 if I don't get it out right now. Again, you probably can't see the marks. Well, now you can't because I sanded them out. I backed up to the 120. No big harm in backing up to 120 to get that done. The problem is when you get all the way to 400 and you see those scratches, you just say, oh man, got scratches. Yeah, you should have gotten them out at 180. You are probably thinking, what's he pulling on here? He said he was going to wet sand. Well, I did, and then I started dry sanding, and it was moving so well I just gave up and went to wet dry sanding. But I'm about I'm about 220 right now, so I'm going to go ahead and 
I've done the dry sanding with 220. I'm going to take it with wet at 220. This is going to raise the grain a little bit and help me lay it down. It's also going to keep the dust way down. Does it impact the finish on the wood? No. Does it hurt the project? No. Is it a better form of sanding? Yes. Will it hurt my lathe? Not really. If you're worried about it, put a piece of Visqueen or uh, Saran Wrap there. But look, I'm barely getting a trace of water on top of it. I use a pump sprayer. Now this is double ionized filtered stream water with a calcium water. No, it's not. It's out of the garden hose. I can sell you anything. Huh? It's 220. Now, I'm going to get a finish off this 220 right here that's good enough to call this, this bowl finished. And I'm going to wet it down between coats. Why? There were rocks and pieces I trapped in this 220 I sanded it with. It was on the face of that. I don't want that on there when I go, when I sand again with the next grit. So I wash it off. And don't do this in your good sports shirt. And if you do it in your good sports shirt, make sure you tell management I told you not to. I don't need to grief. Now I'm going to say that I'm fairly happy with the bowl, the shape, and the sanding that's on it. So I want to put a little bit of a sealer on it just so that I can when I turn it around I've got a basis for a finish. Now I want to finish this off the lathe with shine juice. But sealer under shine juice is a good way to seal the wood and of course, right? And get a look at look at it and see if there's anything I have to fix. Because once I take it off here, it wouldn't be very easy to get it back on. This is deft wood sealer, D-E-F-T. And I get it at home at Lowe's. Surprising, I can't find this product at Home Depot. I can find the finishes, but not the, the, the sealer. They want to sell you a Minwax product that's uh, latex-based or cellulose-based. doesn't work nearly as well. So I rubbed in a little bit of it. Now we take a look. That was just some spots that it didn't go into. But all in all, I really like the look of that. I don't see any grain tears. I don't see any sanding squirrels. I don't see any marks. In fact, I see where the little black dots in the mahogany are standing out really nicely, which means we got a good cut on this. What I didn't mention is if you do have a tear or a mark that this shows through the sealer, it will never get any better until you remove it. So if I had a tear in here, I'd crank it back up and take the tool and work it out and then sand it and work it on through. Why put this much effort into a bowl in the last five minutes with five more minutes of work, you can fix a really bad mistake or a, a tear that you didn't have control over. We have a little finish on the face of this. I see absolutely no tool marks on it. As a beginner, I'd be quite pleased with this. I have to take this off the glue block. To do that because of the size of the piece, I took it off the lathe completely, put my tool rest on, slid it up on this end, brought up to the right height, put the piece back on, and now with a shop made parting tool, we're going to, to remove the glue block. I'm going to go in here, and I'm not going to cut the bowl, I'm going to cut the block. And I only have to go a half an inch deep to get it out the way.
See, that was the beauty of using the glue block with that ring on it. Now all I have to do is take care of this ring and the bottom's fixed. I'm going to put this up against something and spin it so I can fix that and I still have that center. You see that? That's registration. We're going to flip this around. I took out another blank, put the faceplate on it, but this could be a piece of three quarter inch plywood, one inch solid stock, pretty much anything. And I spun it to be round and I put a shoulder on it that would match up to the shoulder on here. Okay. So now this will match up to that. I bring up the center, go to my reference point. Now that should be my true center right there. Put a little bitty, bitty bit of pressure on it. And when I spin, I see that it's not my true center. So I need to adjust a little bitty bit. So I'm going to back off a little bit. Go down just a touch. Come back and make contact again. That's pretty close to my true center. Got a little bit of a wobble, but I think I can cut with that. I can keep playing with it. I'm going to have that mark unless I do this with a soft touch. But since we haven't done that with you yet, we're just going to go ahead and take our tool, our half inch, our round tool, 18 millimeter tool, and clean that detail up right there. Test spin would have proven that that was a problem, huh? Guess I should have done that. I'm going to snug it up a little bit more because this tool rest tends to move, or this and tail stock moves a little bit. Bring my tool rest back a little, get a little comfort room, then light cut. hardest thing you'll cut all day long is that super glue. Got the foot about where I wanted it, but I need to clean this up and I want to take it off that live center or get that out the way. This is regular packing tape. What I'm going to do is go around and around this piece. And bind it to the face plate. I'm going to look to get a few loops on it. I don't want to get out too far because I, it'll be in my way of sanding. But this will hold it to the piece. No magic for a reverse chuck. With that removed, I can clean up and detail out this center and sand the rest of it back out again. Tool rests a little bit high. There we go, so the cutter comes right into the center. Let the tool do the work. Then we'll sand this thing out. Well, let's see. Let's sand it out. Now that we sand it out, Go ahead and cut the fiber tape. Remove the piece from our jam block or our sandwich chuck or whatever you want. And I 
I'll tell you what, in about 35, 40 minutes time using just a taste of carbide kit and a couple of homemade shop tools which included the self-powered sander, the skew, the drill, uh, those tools. You can make all those. We've got a really nice looking bowl here. Now, I'll sand out the rest of the back on this and I'll just hand sand it. It's soft mahogany and that'll get any little marks and tape and all off the back of it. Put a coat of sealer on it. Then I'll buff it out with a scrubby later and start my shine juice. And I'll just lap in a couple of coats of shine juice. This is going to be utilitarian. It's going to be on the kitchen table for a bowl of fruit. Wish I'd done it last week. I had a bowl of fruit challenge and I needed a nice bowl to put it in. Man, if I only had that time machine. Oh well. I'm Captain Eddie Castle and thanks for joining me today as we've been outside the shop making shavings. You take care, be good. On all, don't forget, like me on Facebook. My media manager says that's really important. says it's important. See you later. Take care.